Now I've got to strip this wire back and uh, I thought I'd use a different wire stripper today. Uh, this one which came from Wix. So uh, let's open that up. Not quite sure which hole to use, perhaps the second one along. Don't want to strip much back. This is the wire that's going to go to the... Hmm, just need to remove that. Uh, that goes to the speaker. So I'll solder that into the board and then the other end onto the speaker. Now does polarity matter on a speaker? Well not really because when you've got a positive current you might think it would be a good idea to have the cone move out and for a negative current the move, cone moves in but equally it would work fine the other way around so it doesn't really ma matter which way around the speaker goes and it's not even marked with a positive and negative because well there isn't one really it's arbitrary. I'm always a bit concerned when soldering to speakers or microphones because you can see the two little wires uh, from the coil uh, coming up through this gap and soldered onto these inner pads. Now they have provided separate outer pads for me to solder onto and they're linked with fairly small links so that if I solder onto these I shouldn't melt the solder on these inner pads and have these uh, wires from the coil come flying off so I should be all right. So let's do a tinning of these wires. The uh, insulation has withdrawn a little bit so it's not totally heat resistant. Put a nice big blob onto both sides of the speaker. And now see if I can do this. Hmm, I might have to shape this a bit. So I'll have these bending out and coming back in and let's get them on to these two points that one and that one okay that looks good right i fed these two wires through these two holes on the board so i just need to solder those on the back right let's solder in this terminal block which goes there oh that's a very loose fit i'll need some blue tack now that says 6 volts, um, but I think I'm going to use 9 volts on this. It shouldn't make too much difference. Certainly there's nothing here that's going to uh, have a problem with that additional voltage. Yes, it'll be a bit louder and it might also change the frequency characteristics a little bit. But this battery um, is fairly high resistance. Um, it's also probably a bit flat, so I think it'll be absolutely fine. And then this capacitor which I'm not going to solder in initially, I'll probably just place it in there and see if by sort of wobbling it around I can get it to make contact. And just I just want I'm just interested to see what the effect of um, that capacitor not being there and not being in this feedback loop actually has. Right, let's screw my ground and VCC connections into this terminal block. And I've got a 9 volt clip on there. that one in and put nine volts onto the circuit oh, yep yeah, they seem tight and see if it makes a sound with that capacitor out okay live test uh, no rehearsal here so let's see what this sounds like it doesn't work at all so <laughs> that capacitor in the feedback is presumably needed to get the oscillation going I'll solder it in. I suppose that makes sense because for this to sound like a cicada, cicada, um, it would really need two oscillators, one to produce a tone and then one to sort of modulate that tone so it makes a sort of chirping sound. So um, the feedback capacitor is probably to create a second oscillator. Okay, well let's see if it works um, with that one soldered in. That's the 22 nanofarad capacitor. Let's try it now. Right, another live test, no rehearsal. What on earth is that? Maybe it doesn't like 9 volts. No, that's really not oscillating at all. Um... Let's try 5 volts. 
Right, this battery box is five volts. Maybe this thing is quite fussy about voltage. Uh, is that the right way around? Yes. That doesn't really sound like a cicada, does it? That's what sounds more like a police siren. So I didn't really want to use uh, a switch mode power supply on this thing um, because I just felt it might affect the sound. I wanted to use a battery really, but I don't have a, a six volt battery conveniently to hand. Actually, I suppose I could put alkalines in that, f in that uh, four cell holder. Yes, now I do have enough alkalines. But anyway, let's uh, switch this on and set it to six volts and just see whether that uh, makes any difference. So 7.5, down, 7, 6.5, 6. Let's try this. Oh. Right, now something else I can try is, if I turn this off, Let's completely switch it off. Uh, this puts out, it switches off the boost converter, so this just puts out the battery voltage, which should be around 3.7 volts. It's only be quieter if I do that. Now, does that sound like a cicada? I don't know. Now on Wikipedia there is a recording of a cicada, so let's play that and I'll need to put the camera up near the speaker. So that's what a cicada actually sounds like. Let's try this electric electronic circuit again. I think this 3.7 volts does give a fairly good uh, rendition, I think, of how this circuit's meant to sound. <laughs> yeah, well, that's interesting, isn't it? I'm not sure that sounds very much like a cicada, uh, but it does make an interesting noise. So I've just done a search in my YouTube comments for Cicada Cicada and uh, Pro Cactus says cicadas are not nice to hear at all ever. If you think that kit sounds like one, and I'm not sure it does particularly, then build 10,000 of them and hang them around your house. Okay, I won't be doing that. And uh, LS Juan says, uh, who in God's name would want to build a device to emulate the sound of a cicada? On the other hand, uh, Iceberg789 says cicada songs are very effective in inducing a good night's sleep. Well, that sounds rather nice. However, I'm not sure that uh, this is going to induce a good night's sleep for anyone. So really, I mean, although this kit's interesting and yes, you've got a two-tone oscillator, it's not really the solution. I think the answer is I'm just going to have to head for the sun. Cheerio.